Hey, everybody. How you doing? Well, that's good. Welcome to PHLY Flyers presented by Mortgage CS. Check out MortgageCS.com slash PHLY to start your home buying process today. Company NMLS ID number 1464766. My name is Bill Matz. I'm your director of fun and games for the evening. Joining me tonight, Philadelphia's number one hockey beat reporter, Charlie O'Connor and Broad Street Hockey's own Kelly Hinkle. Guys, long time no see. Yeah. How's everything been it's going been with you? Fancy. It's uh, been a while, stained voice. I'm not leaving. <laughs> been a while. <laughs> so, <laughs> Noah, uh, it's been a long day, fam. Um, yeah, so we did the pregame. We did. We did the watch party. We are now here for postgame in our uh, never-ending coverage of this team. This is like a 24-hour. This is, I, I cannot, like, thinking about what Wet Chaos did for 24 hours. We've been doing this for, like, three, and I'm good. Wow. <laughs> so, but no, uh, no dog mask, no woo tonight. The Flyers came up just short in what was a pretty damn great comeback uh, attempt. But once again, they kind of just unravel for a few minutes and it cost them at least maybe a point. I mean, they still would have had to tie, you know, but they had a good chance to win this they game did. at several different points or at least get it to overtime. But things just did not work out for them. Charlie, initial thoughts on that one? I think the initial thought is that they played two good periods. They played an awful three or four minutes. And then they played a good final 15 minutes. But the Flyers are in a position right now where they cannot afford to have a lapse. Because especially with how thin this defense is right now, if you're a better team, you can afford to to not take off, but just have like five or six minutes where you just kind of suck. Lapse. The Flyers can't. They cannot afford to do that. They're not good enough right now. They really aren't good enough, period. But when their defense is what it is now, they're really not good enough. And it just makes it so getting points in this gauntlet when every game is against a really good team, it's really freaking hard. They can't have any lapses. And they had a brief lapse, and that was enough to lose this game. Three minutes. Yeah. Three minutes. Kelly, thoughts? No one's going to like it, but I'm not mad at the outcome of that game. I mean, like, obviously, it would have been nice for them to win. It would have been really nice for Sandstrom to make that save after they initiated the comeback. That yeah. really was the backbreaker, I think. But the, the Bruins kicked their asses every time. And the Flyers had every opportunity to just be like, oh, well, Bruins game again, down by three. What are you going to do? And they fought back really well. They did. That Morgan Frost goal was so sick. That yeah, was, was unbelievable. It's, yeah. It, I mean, like, if you, I mean, you can call it like a moral victory or whatever, and like, you can get pissy about it, but like. Like John Tortorella was? Yeah. Again. <laughs> All of this is like extra, like we weren't supposed to make the playoffs. Like this is a rebuilding year. None of this is supposed to be happening. Like this was a game that the Flyers were slotted to lose 6-2 or something like that. Yeah. And they did not. And they got very close to tying it. And if they could have been able to start Sam Arison, maybe we're talking about a whole different game given the way the rest of the team played. O obviously a lot of ifs, but like I'm not... I'm not mad at it. We were expecting a blowout before that game we were. started. Yeah. that's. I think that's kind of what frustrates me about the game is uh, you get five on Swayman. You hold Pasternak, I think, to one assist, no goals. Mm -hmm. um, you had chances. That, like To me, that means you should win. I mean, <laughs> If you score five on Boston and Pasta doesn't score... Like someone did like enough people did their job. Yeah. You know, at least like the team as a whole did some, but they just fell apart for those couple of minutes. Yeah. Really like yeah. that last Sandstrom goal. That's really what lost them. But like those three in three that, minutes. Yeah. If he is, makes that save. Yeah. If, if you keep that to one or two. Yeah. You know, you have a real shot in this one and that's yeah. frustrating. It yeah. is. It is frustrating for sure. The, the Sandstrom goal. That was rough. Yeah. It's just, it's just because it's not even. We, we were talking about this during the watch party about how the San Jose game, it wasn't that Sam Harrison played great. It wasn't that he was 
unbeatable that he had this like incredible game it was that when they needed him to make a big yeah, save when the it. game was tied early in the third period he's facing a breakaway he makes the stop flyers score what ultimately becomes the game-winning goal shortly thereafter in large part because sam Harrison kept the game tied yep this game flyers are storming back they cut the lead to one they have all the momentum they're they're driving in the offensive zone everything's going well you were you could feel that next goal coming. yes all they needed was one stop from Felix Sandstrom. Just that one. The other ones, I didn't think he was bad the rest of the game, but they desperately needed that stop, yes. and he just couldn't give it to him. Yep. No, that's, I don't want to pin this all on uh, Felix because, like, the first goal we said, okay, it's a nice shot. You'd like to see him stop it, but really nice shot. After that, the goals are slam dunks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, three guys down low, unchecked, just flyers looking around. What the hell? So it's not as if they supported him at other points, but they so badly needed him to just make that. That was not a tough save. No, no. that And <laughs> like, that's the other problem with it. It wasn't like it was tough. This was not one of the. It was a save he should have had. Oh, uh, yeah. like they're all pressing. Now we have a 2 on 0 the other way. And it's like, well, what can you do? This was a one on one. Yeah, it was no a traffic. Shot. It was originally a two on one. Sandheim yeah. back checks and covers the guy he could have passed yeah. to. That is a one on one with a guy on a bad angle. And Sandstrom, to my eyes, and I'm not a goalie expert, it looked to me like Sandstrom was too far over to his right. Yeah. And he was off his angle, and there you go. Boom. Done. Yeah. And to give the Flyers credit, they come back, and they score another one. They got one, To yeah. make it a game again. Then you're just like, well, shit, that goal really was coming. Yeah. Because it did ultimately, they got it anyway. Yep. They did. And that's what really, like, it's hard to put this one all on Sandstrom because they did have those breakdowns. Yes. But, man, they fought back, and they were building that momentum. They were fighting, and then it just wind out of the— Like, how yeah. do you come back now? There's just not enough time. Exactly. They, they tried. Uh, now, again, they could have just not let in three goals in three minutes to start the period. Absolutely. That would have been nice. There's that. <laughs> yeah, like, it, like, that's ultimately what it comes down to. Yeah. But they moved on from that. Like, yeah. They were able to put that behind them, and it, it's just such a freaking letdown, man. Uh I went from going, yeah, they're going to get killed, whatever, to, oh, they, they got something here. And then, all right, they're getting killed. That's what I expected. To be able to be let down from that, it was a fun game. But, ah, oh, man, they needed a point. Like, they needed at least one point from this game. I feel like this is one we're going to nice. This is one we're gonna look back on and go, ooh, when they miss by a point, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a rough one. It's just, it wouldn't even be as detrimental if they weren't in the midst of this tough of a stretch. Yes. Yeah. Because if if they had a game coming up, you know, in two days against like the Blues, not even like an awful team, but just like a middle of the road team, you could say, oh yeah, you could build on this. They 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 give they give the Bruins on the road a really good game. Bruins are a really good team, a playoff lock, legitimate contender. And now you go in and you can go against a team that is nowhere near as good. No. They got the team that just beat them 6-2 up next. Then well, they get what Carolina, Carolina. Then yeah. it's this Boston team again. <laughs> then New York. Like this, it just doesn't stop. No, it's right. No, they, they need to squeeze some points out of here, and it, it, it's just getting harder and harder to figure out where they're going to do it. This was an opportunity where they could have gotten at least one. They were in this game. They played pretty well for the most part, especially in those first two periods, and it just feels like a missed opportunity. Uh, we were talking during the game, like during this seven-game stretch. They were going to need to figure out a way to steal a few points here and there. It's like, all right, you go to you, Toronto, comes in, you lose 6 2. All right, you were never getting that one. Yeah. This one had, there were points to be had from this game. Yeah. One, if not two points. You did lead for a lot of this game, one nothing and two one. Yeah. It's like, you know, th there were chances to actually win this thing. And then yeah. to come away with none, you look ahead and go, well, how many more of these are going to have that many things go the Flyers' way? Where, uh, yeah, we're going to steal points from this one. This was one where it was doable, and it, they come away with none. It was right in front of That's them. This, it it this, was right in front of them yeah. twice. It was right in front of them first to begin the third period. Yeah. And then it was right in front of them again when they're storming back, and then Sandstrom gives up the weak goal. Like, yeah. there were two opportunities they had, and at both the opportunities, they weren't able to come through. And it's not like I'm going to kill them for this game because they played well for long stretches. They do have a very, uh, a very undermanned defense. You know, one thing I thought was very interesting uh, in John Tortorella's postgame comments, which I didn't even think of, but it makes all the sense in the world. So at the end of the second period, there's a scrum. 
And because of that, you have Jake DeBrusque from, from Boston and Cam York from the Flyers start out the third period in the box. And Tortorella basically said, with way the way our defense is right now, we cannot afford for Travis Sanheim or Cam York to take any penalties. That's fair. Because they came out of that third period thinking, they come at, came out into the third period thinking, it's a four on four. We're already at a talent efficiency against most teams when there's more open ice. And now we only have one clear cut above average NHL defenseman yeah. to throw out there in the four on four in Travis Sanheim because Cam York's in the box. Even though it's not like it's a power play, in a way it kind of is no, because yeah. they just don't have the horses back there to do it if one of those two guys can't skate for two minutes. No, that's that's a great point. Like just the fact that John Tortorella just looked at the cameras and said, yeah, Travis Sanheim and Cam York can spend no time in the penalty box. Yeah. Like these are the top two defensemen who are playing almost half the game. And, and they're it, probably going to yeah. do something illegal at some point. And it, does, <laughs> and it also speaks, I mean, because like, look, John Tortorella, no NHL coach is going to go out there and straight up say like in so many words, two thirds of my defense just isn't that good. But that is as close as you're going to get to a saying. coach saying two thirds of my I mean, defense just isn't that good. It, it, we all know. What's he supposed they to know. Like at a certain <laughs> point, it's like, well, they don't know. Like, they know. You know. I don't want to talk shit on my guys, but yeah. these aren't even my guys. No, know. <laughs> you know? yeah. Let me take a quick second to tell you about our partners. Empire Today, baby. Ooh. Oh, I love doing the Empire read because with Empire Today, you get shop at home convenience, the right product for your needs, quick and professional installation, and a price match guarantee. Empire Today, you know it. You know it. Yeah. They are the best place to get new flooring. So, of course, they've got copycats. But the copycats can't beat Empire today on quality, service, or speed. So what they do, they advertise low-quality products that they simply wouldn't carry. Empire today won't promise the lowest prices because anyone who does that is putting flooring in your home that they wouldn't put in their own. The Empire philosophy is to help you find what you need, not overwhelm you with thousands of choices and substitutes. What Empire leaves out of their selection is as important as what they put in. Empire's product team exhaustively co exhaustively combs through thousands of product samples each year to find the perfect styles. And the virtual floor designer is a great way to see how new floors will look in any space. It's easy. Just snap a picture and instantly see how new floors will look in your room. Schedule a free in-home estimate today. All listeners can receive a $350 off discount when they use the promo code PHLY. Restrictions apply. See empiretoday.com slash PHLY for details. 1-800-588-2300. Empire. Today. All right. I hope oh, someone would chime cute. in with that one. Um, so Felix Sandstrom, where are we after that game with him? Like, I know we, I asked during the game, like, do you see a world in which maybe he can be the backup next year? Nah. And he, I thought, like, for the majority of this game, he played pretty well, but... As soon as that goal goes in, Charlie looks at us and goes, yeah, this is why you can't count on him. No. That's the inconsistency. Not even game to game, like you mentioned, but like in-game consistency. He made some huge saves in this he one. He sure did. And then, like, stop it. Just yeah. stop it. And he can't. No. He just, he's unable to. And that's the thing. Like, this isn't, this isn't the same as hanging the loss on Felix no. Sandstrom. It, he is not the reason the Flyers lost no, this he's game. Not. Absolutely not. But when you look at it on a micro level, we've said it 18 times now, that's a save in that moment that absolutely has to be made in order for the Flyers to win that game. And he didn't make that save. It didn't matter that he made the other saves before. It really didn't. That was the one that he needed to have. And he didn't. And it, if, you're, if you can't trust your goaltender in that moment to make that kind of save, I don't know how you could trust an entire season yeah. of him being the backup plan when you know goalies get hurt yeah like what's happening if you're starting felix sandstrom 20 games in a row because sam arison is out like <laughs> not good not good so like no it's <laughs> it's good for us that there are several backup goaltenders available this summer no th that's what's going to happen this summer yeah. is the flyers i imagine whether it's that's a trade be the buy. or a signing I would guess, because it's not even just the fact that Sandstrom isn't that good, which he's not, but it's not just that. It's the fact that I don't think they want to throw Sam Harrison to the Wolves. Like, this no. is a situation that he's in because Carter Hart 
got charged with sexual assault. Yeah. Like this is not something that they, they they did not want to put Sam Harrison in the position no. to be yeah. taking this big of a workload. It's just the way it played out. However, however, if you have an entire off season to plan out how right. you can best develop Sam Harrison into the goal you want him to be in the future. I don't think that involves you playing him 65 games. No, and you need to have a backup because right now they don't, and they haven't since Sam Harrison took this job. They haven't had someone that they can fully trust to take games from him. They have to pick up a goaltender that they can feel comfortable starting in a solid third, at least, yeah. of the games next season. Yeah. And there's no one right now in the organization that fills that role. So they got to go. At least no him. one here. Yeah. I, yeah I, I mean, like no one. Yeah. Here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think they're going to go from somewhere else and get themselves yeah. a backable. And I there think that's, are what, plenty that's what they should do. Like, mm -hmm. I want Sam Harrison to get the lion's share of the starts next year, and but he, the lion's yeah. share of the starts can be somewhere between 50 and 55. Right. Yes, exactly. No, and that's we we talked about his workload, you know, while Carter Hart was still here. And it was like, you know, Harrison's been pretty good. Can he maybe play himself into a 50 50 sort of situation? And that was starting to happen. And then all of a sudden it went from, Oh, I'd like to see a little more of Sam to, oh, he's starting every single night. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's and the situation they're in. And literally, we can't afford yeah. to not start him. Yeah, and that's the situation they're in. And then he doesn't play tonight because he's had, you know, three of his last six games, he's had a 750 or lower save percentage. Yeah. It's it, Dude probably needs a night, yes. and he got it, but this is what happens, especially against a team like Boston. Yeah. Like, but, yeah. but, but also the way he's been playing, the he, he, he might have given yeah. up eight. He could have given up ten. Yeah. No, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's just like because he needs this time, yeah, he couldn't play tonight. Right. He was either going to get lit up or like hurt. And neither of those is a really good outcome. So this is just the way so, things are so right I now have for a this question team. for you guys. Because okay. we, I, we have some people in the comment okay. section basically saying, did Danny screw up by not getting a backup goalie? I was going to ask that. Here's yeah. my question, because they they obviously gave up the fourth-round pick mm -hmm. to get Eric Johnson. They desperately needed some bodies in the back end. I'm not necessarily saying they screwed up by not giving away another pick for a backup goalie. I don't even know if they're ready seriously available. However, one guy who was available was Antti Ranta yes. on waivers, yeah. who you could have gotten for nothing. Should have. Brushed. Was that the mistake? I think it was. <sighs> Because it was free. It was right there. The fact no that risk. you didn't have to surrender an asset. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did want to see, like, Arison play a ton, and I still do. But you could have done that with Ronta. Yeah, you could have. Um, yeah. That was a miss. The yeah. fact that you could get him for nothing, they didn't even put a claim in. That's... I, I know. Uh, it's tough. I mean, I guess they wanted to see Sandstrom. Yeah. They thought he deserved he he had played pretty well in those couple starts and it was like okay well we think he can do it for four or five more. Oh wait, wasn't there a thing where they after they had acquired Johnson, they no longer had the cap space available to claim? They could Johnson? have maneuvered. They and they could always they, they could don't. always tap at LTIR. Like they've yeah. they've been using the entirety of Ryan Ellis' salary, like as yeah. if it's a normal salary, they could True. at any time they want put him on LTR. Now there are some implications with regards to that. They could potentially then have a bonus overage for next year, yeah. but they could have made it work. And then, and then obviously you also would be sending down Sandstrom. Yeah, I'm. I'm wondering if this is just indicative of what Jonesy has said out loud several times, like to you guys and to other people, that this year ain't it. Like, we're not trying yeah, to win this year. So we don't feel the need to go out and get a backup goaltender and maneuver the cap around and risk these overages because this isn't it. And that's where I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt and saying, like, was that a mistake Danny made? Yeah, probably. But this is a rebuild. Yeah. Like, let's just see the guys in the organization. Now, that said, why not Adam Jinning over Eric Johnson? Like, why not somebody from the Phantoms? Someone... Like, I realized that situation they were in, like, that one day. Yeah, They yeah. had all those guys in the lineup. <laughs> but, like, Emil Andre did make this team out of camp. You know, like, there are players on the Phantoms that yeah. I don't think for one game their whole career is going to end because they didn't play well in the, like, I don't know. I No, nah, I mean, there. yeah, you're not wrong. Like, there are other ways they could have gone about it. But, like, I, I don't know. I just think that, like, we have to remember – that the front office is legitimately not trying to win a goddamn thing this year. 
And I know that annoys people because the team's kind of good. And so, like, oh, we're going to pick 15th and not make the playoffs. Like, I, all right, whatever. They still very well might make the playoffs. Right, because it's other like teams it's, it's, keep helping them. It's not like them. the team's chasing them or playing that great either. No, it's just like, I don't know. Would I have picked up Ranta given the circumstances? Probably. Can I understand why they didn't? Yes. Also that. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Uh, is it like, oh, I don't know about Danny now. Like, no, no, it's not that. It just might be a miss. Yeah. Like, that could just very well be the sure. case. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about some of the good things that did happen tonight because there was some fun there shit, some man. There were good things. Like that, uh, but first, let's, uh, let's talk real quick about Philly sports trips. Ooh. Oh, baby. Our, our, uh, our Phillies crew, they are all down in Clearwater on the Philly sports trip right now. Like they're they're having, having an awesome time. It looks like a ton of fun. And, of course, it is. Because it's always a great time with Philly sports trips. They take care of the whole experience for you from flights and hotels, game tickets, transportation, whatever it might be. They have you covered with Philly sports trips. And we're going to be working with them throughout the uh, throughout all the upcoming seasons and everything that might happen this summer. So you're going to want to make sure you bookmark allphly.com slash events so you can learn more. Book your trips when they come up. We're going to be telling you all about them. But for right now, man. I am excited about this one, and I think I think everyone down there is having a great time. I've been to Clearwater before. I haven't uh, haven't been with Philly sports trips, but from all the pictures, damn, do I wish I was there. Uh, not I know Charlie just came back from Florida, but I, I hope not to get stranded there for days on end like he was. <laughs> that wouldn't happen with Philly sports trips because they take care of all the BS for you. So you just got to have fun. Make sure you check out Philly sports trips. All right, some of the good shit that happened in the game. Let's start with that Morgan Frost. Ooh. I mean, that was a goal for man. all the it's the Morgan Frost discourse. And I know like the three of us need to at some point like log off for a considerable amount of time. <laughs> I would just like but, to say, I would just like to say we were right about Morgan Frost. We just got tired of fucking talking about Morgan Frost <laughs> because we could never stop talking about Morgan Frost Fair. because John Tortorella it's the only us to thing, talk to yeah. Him. yeah. Uh, but he's he's good. He's, he's got good. Stuff. He's a good player. Yeah. I don't know like what his ultimate ceiling is. Solid but three. He can score for you. He yeah. can score some points for you. He has some skill. He still has to get there with the consistency. John Tortorella has been harping on that. But when you see a goal like tonight, uh, the play that he made to score, Ooh. you just go like, yeah, that's why you don't give up on a guy like Morgan Frost. And he's. Really, he's lately the last few games he's been setting guys up really well too. Like not just scoring points himself, he's been setting guys up for some good scoring chances. But going between the legs, between the five hole, like. And I gotta say, I saw. Uh, I was like, I saw disgusting. I saw Frost. I think it was in the uh, maybe the first or second period. I think it was the first. Um, down low, David Pasternak wins a battle uh, in the flyer zone. Here comes Frost, comes up behind him, stick lift, strips the puck, breaks it out the other way. Yeah, That's that two-way stuff we're talking about here. And Morgan Frost uh, scores a goal tonight. That's his only point. Plus three in a game in which they gave up six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. Not too shabby. Their, their, line, was, shabby. their line was really good. And, and Frost, like, I thought that at five-on-five five against, granted, not many people played that well. At five-on-five five against Toronto, he wasn't that great. But on the power play, he showed a lot. Yeah. Yes. And I thought he was fantastic against the Sharks. So it's, it does seem like Frost is very much getting back into form, which is welcome for the Flyers, because before that, I thought his play dipped a bit after he had a really, really good January. Um, around like mid-February, I started to see his game dip. It looks like it's coming back, so that's big for the Flyers. But yeah, I mean, that goal was... It just it reminds you that he's a really talented player. Disgusting. He is. And this is the kind of shit that we see all the time. And by we, I mean people in the media. Mm -hmm. We see all the time at practice. Mm. Like, those are the kind of maneuvers that he does on a regular basis when we're just watching the players mess around in practice. And you see it, and you're just like, why doesn't he do this more in games? Well, he just did. There you go. So now he's doing And what was it? His very first goal in the NHL was like a crazy. That walked the line on. Yeah, oh, yeah. Crazy yeah. good stick work. Yeah. Like it's there. The the high end talent with Frost, It's he shows it sometimes. Not nearly as much as we would like him to. But he does show it sometimes just as a reminder of, hey, I'm, I'm still here. And I could be good. Could be real good, maybe. 
I think he's been breaking out the stick work a little bit more recently, mm -hmm. uh, just showing that like I am really good at handling the puck. Yeah, like, I think he's been doing that some, and that's just one of those things that like he's never gonna be the perfect like, especially for a coach like Tortorella, but any coach like a guy with the high end skill who doesn't do all the little things yeah. needs to score a hundred points for a coach to put up with him. You yes. know, like I, I told you the story a few weeks ago about uh, someone who played with, um, I think it was Gabrick in New York with mm. uh, Torts. Yeah. And like, it's Mary. He's the reason you score ever. Right. And like, he's <laughs> constant in film, just constantly busting his balls though. Like still like he's nowhere near where he needs to be to block a shot. And he's just like, rewind. Like you have to be as good as him to, stay in the lineup and on the coach's good side. And right. I don't know if Morgan Frost is ever going to be a point of game guy, but man, he gives you some really good scoring yes. depth. And for this team right now, who, who is more skilled at like pure skill? Who has more than him? God connect me. Probably yeah, one guy. Me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like TK has the craziest dangles. No. He is a wild, mm -hmm. like Good high shot. effort player yeah. with enough skill to make it all kind of work. You know, I, I get why coaches like connect me because he looks like he's skating like a maniac out there. Yep. And that's never going to be what Morgan Frost is. Uh, his line mate tonight, Owen Tippett, three assists, including one to set up the Frost goal. Didn't have the uh, like, you know, 10 shots on goal kind of game that we've seen out of him before. Yeah. But pretty big impact now. Uh, two goals, three assists in his last three games. He's getting it going a little bit after, like uh, you know, we know this man is streaky and it looks like he's starting to get going good again. Which is huge because the Flyers, someone has to start scoring the goals. Yeah, I mean, the problem, granted, like there's been other problems, but they can score. It seems like guys are getting back going. Frost yeah. is getting back going. Tippett seems to be getting back going. Faraby, we'll talk about it in a few minutes. He had two goals tonight. It does seem like guys are getting back going. I'm not terribly concerned about their ability to score goals. I'm far more concerned about the, their ability to prevent goals. Yeah. Like, they scored five goals tonight. That should be enough to win you a game. It really should. should. And like, And this isn't me calling out Sandstrom. Obviously, he, I'm sure he want to have that one goal back, but this is team defense. Oh, for sure. This is yes. oh, God. The, the defense core and also the forwards. The like, forwards. I mean, mm -hmm. Cam Atkinson, on one, I forget which of the three of in that, that early third period blitz, but it was pretty clear Cam Atkinson was late covering yeah. the guy in the front of the net. Um, Sanheim got pulled away, which I think was – I'd have to go back through the tape, but I'm pretty sure that he did what he was supposed to do because they do play the uh, the zone defense. Mm -hmm. I think he just got pulled up, and Atkinson has to recognize that and cover the guy in front of the net. He's late getting back. Easy goal. Yeah. Like, this isn't just a defense core thing. The defense core, the weak defense core is playing into it, because then there's going to be more breakdowns that the forwards have to erase. Yeah. But the forwards still have to do a better job of getting back and helping to erase those breakdowns. They're not doing a good enough job right now. Ultimately, I mean, I've been defending Couturier. I thought he had a really good play on the uh, on the Delure goal. He needs to, that on one of those three. Again, they all blend at this point. I think it was the third of the three. He like soft flips it trying to get the puck out of the zone. It doesn't even come close to getting out of the zone. Then everything's in chaos and then Boston scores. Like these are plays where your veterans, Agnison and Couturier, they just need to be better. They need to be better because the defense core is not good enough to hold down the forward on its own. It's just not. Yeah. So the forwards have to pick up the slack and tonight and they not. did not pick up the slack enough. Now this is something we, uh, we talked about the other night, like, I understand the goalies are going to let in bad goals because they're not that good. It I happens. understand the defense is what it is right now. Four of the top six from a couple of weeks ago are all gone. Like, it, mm. uh, you deal with it. The veteran forwards in this group just aren't playing well enough. And the yeah. guys who need to start scoring kind of are. Cam Atkinson, 16 straight games now without a point. But no shock there. Um, like, what is the issue when you see... Even a Mark Stahl on defense, but like Cam Atkinson, Sean Kinsley, the dudes who need to do the little things, they are the culture setters. Yeah. What's going wrong here? Uh, uh, so I do many things. I mean, I just think if we're like, I just criticize Atkinson and Gaturia. Yeah. They deserve to be criticized. However, like the answer as to what's going wrong here is obvious. Gaturia missed a year and a half. Atkinson missed a year. Yeah. They're cooked. They're, they're not cooked in the sense that they're like, they're finished as players, I don't know. but I they're worn like down. They're Do you think the, especially the use of Gaturia was 
ill-advised earlier in the season or they were just doing what they had to do and deal with the consequences later? I think it was the latter. Yeah, I think it was just like, because who the they hell? They have no centers. Who the hell knew yeah. where they were going to be? Like I was going to say, like, they didn't know. Yeah, the fact that they're in a playoff race right now is like, objectively speaking, fucking shocking. shocking. Yes. <laughs> and also, you don't, like, you don't know that Sean Gatori isn't going to be able to, like, he looks so good. Yeah. It's reasonable to think, oh, he's fine. Like, I don't think that they could have really foreseen that he would have dropped off this much just because, you know what I mean? Like, I, maybe you should have expected it because you're professionals, but I think given how well he was playing, the the drop in his play, I feel like, has made people forget how damn good he was, he was early so in the season. He looked like Sean Couturier yes. early in the season. And, and and also, if you if you view, and I know no one wants to hear this right now because everybody's mm -hmm. understandably all in on the playoff race, but if you view this year as a, like, we're learning, you know, the players right. are learning, the young players are learning how to play in these kind of games, they're learning the intensity, you could make a case that this year for Couturier is in part learning about what he now has to do in oh, yeah. his 30s after two back surgeries, what he has to do in order to remain effective when the games get important. That's like, a really good point. I would rather him figure out that, you know what, I need to pull back a little bit in November to make sure that I still got stuff left in the tank in March and April and then hopefully May and June now rather than it be two years down the road when you're hoping the Flyers actually can win a couple rounds. That's a really good point. No, Never yeah, it's, it that way. he is, it's a learning process for the young guys too, but he is living in this new world now yeah. Yeah. where he hasn't played a full season, you know, in part due to COVID and in part due to his injuries since he was 26 and he's 31 now. There's a lot that he has to figure out that he hasn't had to deal with like in years prior when, I mean, even his Selkie year was not a full season, you know, yeah. like it's not, not his fault. No. But. Yeah. It was, it was a season that just happened to be cut short because there was you know a global pandemic. Right. Uh, listen, this season won't be cut short though. Hopefully at least. And if you want to go check out the flyers, they have some big ones coming up at home. If you're going to do it, you got to do it with game time. Uh, they have, they have Toronto again in just a couple of days. They're going to be playing the Leafs on Tuesday. Uh, they go on the road, but then they come back for Boston on Saturday and then Florida on Sunday. That is a huge back-to-back. -back. If you want to get in the stadium, the best way to do it, you know it's with the Game Time app because buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you with killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Game Time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code PHLY for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code PHLY for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Uh, someone else who really showed up tonight. We're talking about guys, the streaks kind of coming to the, the cold streaks at least, kind of coming to an end. Joel Farabee was on a uh, one goal in 18 game streak a few days ago. He now has three in his last three games with a goal tonight. He's starting to get Two going. Goals tonight. Yeah, with two goals tonight. Yes, that's yeah. what I, that's what two makes goals. sense. Two Joels. In two Joels. <laughs> it's been a long day, guys. Um, I'm Joel Faraby just needs to score for this team. Like he it's is one of one the job. guys. Yeah. Wh whether it's you know deflections in front, whether it's making a play down low, whether it's a snipe, no matter what it is, he is one of the few players on this team with the ability to put the puck in the net. Yes. He's doing it again, and that seems good for this stretch run here. Yeah, he, uh, he led the entire forward core in ice time with 20 minutes and 31 seconds. Huh. Uh, also, the two goals he scored tonight, he now has a new career high in goals with 21. Hey. 21, look at that. 21 goals 21 for Joel Farabee. Joel Farabee. We'll see how many goals goal score. he finishes with. Now, granted, the um, the 2021 year, the 56-game season, yeah. I think his pace was better because obviously that was a shortened season. Mm -hmm. He scored 20 in however many 19, games he played. Yeah, yeah. but... You still got to score the goals. And we now have what? What are there like 15 games left? 14 games left this season for the Flyers? 
Yeah, they're. Uh, I think tonight was number sixty-seven. Okay, so fifteen more, I guess. Would that would be? Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what Farabee can finish with. Maybe this is the start of another hot streak. Guess we'll see. That would be. It would be so cool if like a bunch of these dudes got on hot streaks at the same time. No, I mean we just were saying like it looks like sixty-eight. This was tonight for the Flyers. Okay, so fourteen, so 14 games, games yep. left. So it seems like Tippett's starting to maybe start to figure things out. Morgan Frost is getting back going. Faraby scoring some goals. I don't think offense the rest of the year is going to be a major problem. I think it's going to be can they keep the puck out of the, the net with the blue line core and the goalies because yeah. we got a reminder tonight that Sandstrom is who he is and hopefully giving him a few days off will help Sam Harrison, but that's an unknown. We don't know if we're going to get good Sam Harrison the rest of the year or if it's going to continue to be this good game, awful game, good game, awful yeah. game back and forth. We just don't know. My fear of what this defense and goaltending situation is is why I'm worried about the offense. They're going to have to outscore some teams. Like tonight, they needed seven to win. You know, like Can't that's the like way that. it's going to be. They, and no, they need to keep it down to like four or five. Yeah. But they're not going to play a bunch of two one games. Like that's not the way this is going to go, no, probably. Not if for it the rest is, of the year, no. they either got super healthy or one of these goalies all of a sudden became someone else. Right. Like, you know, like Sam Harrison, all of a sudden, he's got the energy he had in December. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe that happens. Goalie, again, goaltending is wild. Uh, but. I think it's just important for these dudes to start scoring all of them because they're going to have to. Yeah. It's the only way they stand a chance. They're going to give up three, four goals every game. There's they almost can, no way not to. They can keep scoring five against teams as good as Boston. That'll <laughs> that'll be good. It would be. Um, a really, really freaking funny thing happened tonight. <laughs> the Flyers call timeout. And John oh. Tortorella does not speak. He just looks. He just looks at them. Terrifying. And it, was, it wasn't even the fact that he didn't say anything. It was the fact that he had like a little smile. A little smirk. <laughs> it was like a little like soft little smirk. And it had to have been so scary for Blake. Like they made that comeback out of fear. Yeah. <laughs> like, they were like, oh no, what's he going to do? Yeah. Like, She's like, oh, you, you guys think you got to be at the carnival at, uh, at 9 a.m.? Yeah, how about 4 a.m.? We're skating. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, uh, come out to we're, practice. We're doing a full one tomorrow yeah. at the carnival. Get, get the... Uh, we're bag skating. Get the Ferris wheel out of here. <laughs> like, I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to skate. Like, put on your rollerblades like Mighty Ducks. We're going around the concourse. Oh, my God. That'd be <laughs> that would be fucking awesome. That would be hilarious. Yeah. If they're like, doing the jumps and shit. and we come in, and the team's just wrapping up their 700th <laughs> lap around the concourse. Uh, you have to do a hundred laps for every goal you allowed last night <laughs> see it 10 but in fairness it seemed to work yeah, it did it, fi sure it, did. it finally settled down the team and then from that point on aside from the sandstrom goal that he gave up flyers control play the rest of that period pretty if much john tortorella calling a timeout to mentally intimidate you and then nick delorier scoring don't get the boys yeah. going Seriously, what will nick, will nick delorier getting the goal gets one. first goal of the season I, is his 57th game of the year i really wondered if he was going to end the year with zero i was really thinking it was a serious possibility but that was good Couturier. like Couturier made a nice play behind the net to get yeah. that puck over to him yeah. and then he finished it off and i don't know what swayman was doing he was on the other side of the net <laughs> but, well, he was like, well, Nick Deloria is over yeah, here, so I'm going to look. He made eye direction. contact with him yeah, and went, like, oh, I should go over I, here. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't think this is fair. I mean, I, I kind of hope they change this. So that Deloria goal is currently unassisted. Huh. I mean, mm. it probably bounced It off, probably hit someone. But, but like, to me, you have to give Couture. Couture made the play. Yeah, Couture deserves to. an assist on that play. Yeah. That's, uh, that play does not happen without Couture. I wonder Couture. if tomorrow that'll be different. Uh, I thought uh, maybe it was just a puck handling thing and it stuck out in some big spots tonight, but Travis Konechny has played yeah. much better games. Uh, I, and it's hard to be hard on a guy who's been their only good player all year. But it was just weird. Like, he could not settle the puck down at all. It was very uncharacteristic. Yeah, it just, like, kind of happens. I know. But probably, it, it, probably just didn't have the handle on the puck in this particular game. Luckily, the Flyers had other guys yeah, that were yeah, scoring. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I agree. Travis Konechny was not at his best. And mm -hmm. he does pick up a cheap assist on the second Joel Farabee goal. But yeah, this was not Travis Konechny's A game. Nope. Uh, he hasn't been amazing since uh, since coming back uh, you know, from his injury. He has had some great moments. He yeah. had that fantastic assist yeah. uh, to, uh, to Owen Tippett in the San Jose game. So it's not like he's been bad. But I think he has more to give. I do. Yes. And hopefully over the, the final 14 games, he can give it. It's, I they mean, need him to. not to compare him to Pasta, 
but you see Boston score six, and you're like, he didn't have any. I know. Like, he picks up the one assist, TK, but the Flyers score five, and at most points this year, you're like, oh, TK had three points. Right, right. Like, and he doesn't. That just yeah. seems a little odd to me. Uh, we don't have a whole lot left to talk Let's about. Let's just do three stars. That's, we, we're coming up on hour five. No, it's, I wanna, I'm throwing it to three stars now, Charlie. It's, <laughs> I got gotcha. you. It is now time for Charlie O'Connor's three stars of the game. Let's kick it off with star number three. Uh, star number three, I will go with... Let's go with Owen Tippett. Three assists. Actually, I think he led the both teams in points tonight. So I'm going to go Owen Tippett. It's so third weird. star. Really good pass on the uh, on the Morgan Frost goal. Mm. He's getting back going. So I'll give him third star. Is he like? Do you think this is what he is forever? It's just like, yeah, man. For a, two weeks at a time, he's going to be the best player in the team. Yes. And yeah, yes, for the, it's, yeah. that's just who he I is. I think he's going to be worth his contract. Yeah. But I think he's going to frustrate people who want him to be better than that. Okay. And he's going to be cold at times, and he's going to be real hot at times. I just think this Sounds is his own right. tip, it personally. And hey, maybe, maybe he will one year just explode, and that would be incredible. But I am not pinning my hopes upon that outcome. All right. Let's go to star number two. Star number two, I will go with. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go with Joel Farabee. Um, so Joel. two two goals. Um, two goals. I don't think he was incredible all game, but he comes through with the key points. Yes. Uh, cuts the the lead down to one with uh, what was it like about a minute and a half left yeah. in the game? Yeah, two minutes cool. left in the game. Um, obviously uh, scores the goal to put the Flyers in the lead in the second period. Um, you know he's he's just getting back to being Joel Farabee, which is great to see. Let's finish it off. With Charlie's first star. Yeah, and I, I, I was I was debating on whether I was going to give this guy two or one, but honestly, Boston won the game, so they deserve the first star. Two. I'm going to go with Charlie Coyle. One uh, C, Charlie Coyle, first round pick, Charlie Coyle. That goal he scored to kick because it was his goal that kicked off the third period. Yeah. That was like it wasn't quite as nice as the Morgan Frost goal, but it was in the same ballpark. It was, sick. Yeah, it was, it was a sick. really really sick goal, yeah. and I think it wasn't even just that he scored. I think in part, maybe it might have been the way he scored. It just sort of seemed to shell shock the Flyers. And that's what kicked off that three-minute stretch of awful that ultimately caused them to lose this game. It did. And it's no surprise that he picked someone named Charlie. Yeah. yeah big Typical. shocker there. All right. Uh, before we get out of here, <laughs> you know, uh, our presenting sponsor, I'm so proud to always be able to talk to you about our friends at Mortgage CS. Listen, the uh, the spring purchase market, it's here, man. It's heating up quickly. Many clients, especially first-time home buyers, they're reaching out. They want to be ready when rates drop. This is what everyone's doing. That means there's going to be limited inventory and strong demand, and competition will remain extremely fierce for the rest of this year. So you need to get in touch to prepare and ensure you will be able to stand out and make the strongest offers when possible. Whether you're a first-time home buyer or you're looking to refinance, or you just want to know what you have to do to qualify for a mortgage when the time is right for you, Mortgage CS should be a consideration no matter your situation. There are a plethora of mortgage brokers out there. Many of them will promise the best rates, tell you whatever you want to hear to get you to go with them. But the reason you should consider Mortgage CS, simple. They're honest, good people, and they'll always work hard not to let their clients down. But don't take it from me. Check out the reviews on Google. Spoiler, they average five stars, and that's the limit. Let's uh, take a look at one from just a week ago. Short and simple, we had a great experience working with Ben, Alex, Shannon, and Christine. They answered every question we had. We're always prompt and friendly. Thank you so much. Do you need much more than that? Uh, they, need, they took care of all the needs without much, uh, without much left unsaid. So when you hear the word mortgage, think of Mortgage CS. Think of Ben and Alec. Save Ben's telephone number, 267-391-7425 to your phone. Email Ben, ben at mortgagecs.com. Call or text anytime, day or night. If you're not in the home buying market, talk some Philly sports. I bet you he answers. Check out mortgagecs.com slash PHLY to get started. This advertisement is not a commitment to lend or extend credit. Mortgage CS is an equal housing opportunity mortgage broker. All loans are subject to credit approval. Certain restrictions may apply. Company NMLS ID number 1464766. Visit mortgagecs.com for more information. Mation, and they are always our presenting sponsor uh, for our shows. Thank you so much to Mortgage CS. But we had the pregame show. We had the watch party. And those were brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. Yay. Had a great time tonight uh, hanging fun. out, drinking some Coors Lights, watching this Flyers game. Not the result we wanted, 
but it was a lot of fun anyway. And uh, tap those Rockies. Make sure you go to CoorsLight.com slash PHLY hockey to get Coors Light delivered right to your door. I think that's it, guys. I think our day is finally complete. We did it. Uh, Thank you so much to our producer, Bryn, who was with us this entire time. Kelly, you rock. Charlie, great work as always. My name is Bill Matz. Until next time, have a great week, Philly. We all silly like the mayor. 